This is Marcus K. Dowling with Nashville Country Music Report at the Tennessee, and, and I'm here with somebody who's a virtuoso guitarist, a phenomenal player, um, somebody that everybody in town respects. Charlie, how are you doing, man? It's good. it's good to be with you, Marcus. I'm excited about tonight. I mean, so take me into this. You're the guitarist of the year. Well, acoustic. There's, yeah. a, there's a few. There's, there's a few of us, and you know, I'm in good company. Uh, yeah. The category I'm in, the nominees are Dave Cobb, Ilya Tachinsky, and Todd Lombardo, and one of my favorite musicians of all time, regardless of category, Brian Sutton. So I felt like I won just by being in that company. So one of my favorite things about being a, like a session player in town is that you get to play like on the song, you get to play like yes. the Opry, you get to do all of this stuff, and. Take me into like building up credibility for yourself as you play in all these different spaces around right. town. Well, I can definitely tell you there are some songs and session I was, sessions I played on in the early days where, you know, there, there's a phrase called polishing turds. <laughs> 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 I've polished a few in my day. Right. Uh, and that's not the case anymore. It's, it's been a long time since I've played on something I didn't just absolutely love. But to me, the, the real magic uh, in that is you're watching a, a, a musical moment get born and that moment might be something that lives forever uh in history yeah. of, in terms of country music history uh and sometimes it's the person in the booth next to you and sometimes it's you sometimes you're all a part of it uh but i love getting to hear the music come to life yeah. and being an artist myself it's so informative when i go back and make my own records uh the sessions i've played on right. the wisdom I've, I've gained and all the best jokes happen in the control room between takes like that is a given if, if not there in the front lounge of tour buses after shows but certainly control room humor is its own thing right so for yourself there has to be a moment when you stop in the year and you go I've put together a pretty solid body of work when was that moment for you when you felt like okay I'm really hitting a ramp where something may yield of this yeah. at the end of the year well, I get reminders all the time that I'm on the right path. You know, I've been so fortunate. Uh, I joke that I'm taking the scenic route to stardom. <laughs> and uh, that moment for me, actually, I would say happened a few years ago because there's a part, I think, in a lot of our hearts, those of us who do this, where yeah. you have that fear, that voice of fear, and you think, man, I, they're going to find out I'm, and they're going to send me home, you know, yeah. or whatever, and I won't get to do this. But then you have those moments of affirmation. And the one for me was getting the call to play in Vince Gill's touring band. Yes. Because he is a musician's musician. Mm -hmm. And that band is all A-listers. They are likely to go into the Hall of Fame, if not all of them, half of them. Uh, and uh, getting the call to be on that tour was this sort of cosmic pat on the back, like, you're going to be okay. <laughs> but honestly, every time a song comes out, every time I get called to play on a session, yeah. my heart still skips a beat. It's I'm just... All of a sudden, I'm 12 years old again. I'm that kid mm -hmm. with his headphones on in his room, falling asleep with the guitar in his hands, right. just so excited about music. Yeah, what was the song that turned you on when you were like, okay, like, I have to be a guitarist? Oh, well, it would have been seeing Vince Gill play in concert. It would have been seeing Marty Stewart play in concert. Marty Stewart tempted, that was one. Okay, that okay, was it has one. to be, it has to be. I'll but it was yeah. also B.B. King. Right. I grew up in Mississippi, so yeah. I grew up knowing that, th that, you know, there's something to be said when you grow up in a place and you see people come from where you came from and right. make it, yeah. you go, well, if they could, then maybe I could. Right. And I had just an, an, an embarrassment of riches growing up in Mississippi with right. that, with there's B.B. There's King, there's Charlie Pride, there's Jimmy Rogers, yes. there's Marty Stewart. And exactly. The list goes on. Uh, but those songs for me would have been B.B. King Records, <laughs> Leonard Skinner Records, Marty Stewart, and Vince Gill. Absolutely. So um, final question. Uh, as far as being at the Ryman for an event like this, tell us about that. Absolute best venue for an award show you could have, period. There's no <laughs> doubt. Like, but there's no, there's no right, comparison. No, I get it, I get it. There sure. really is no comparison. Yeah. I have so many fond memories being in this building uh, on both sides of the curtain. Yeah. And tonight I'll get to be on both sides of that curtain exactly. a little bit. I've got friends in the audience, friends on stage. And uh, I've got family here. That's another great thing about tonight. And I'm so grateful to the ACM for honoring... My, I call them liner note people. That's my people. And uh, right. what I'm so grateful for is, uh, you know, when you do this for a living, there are really incredible highs, but there are also some incredible lows. And the people who are in your family on the journey with you, they experience more of the hardships, yeah. the time away from home. It's rare that they get to share in the celebration of right. it. And tonight's one of those nights where they get to share in the celebration. So I'm very grateful for that. And the Mother Church, there just couldn't be a better place to do it. Absolutely. So this has been Marcus K. Dowling, the Nashville Country Music Reporter at Tennessee. And here with Charlie Warsham at the ACM Honors. Thank, Thank you so you. much. Thanks, Marcus.